Well, hello everyone, <clears throat> excuse me, and welcome, <clears throat> welcome to a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Where have we heard that before? But for us, those of us who are followers of Christ, we can say that because he is in us and we are in him. My name is Vivian Baker, and as always, it's such a blessing when we can gather together like this. But before we begin, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we just come before you, and in the simplicity of our words, we just ask you to refresh our hearts and our minds in your word. We pray this in your most precious name, Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Well, my title for my sharing with you today is, It's Just As If You Did It. It comes from a personal experience that I recently had, and my main verse for today is from Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, where Paul exhorts us as he says, Do not grow weary in doing good, for in the proper time we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. So I, oftentimes I have a question that I ask myself, so I'll ask you as well. Do we ever feel overwhelmed by doing the good that we're called to do? And I can answer for myself and leave it up to you to answer for yourself. Of course we do. You know, we're human and we have those human frailties. And sometimes we struggle with our flesh. And even Jesus, in fact, he probably knew it better than we even know it. In Matthew 26, verse 41, Jesus said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So when things come to mind uh, on things perhaps that we should be doing <clears throat> or that we think that we should be doing. First and foremost, the number one thing that we should always do is pray. Pray. Seeking God's uh, counsel, God's wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, that great wise man spoke to us and said, A man's heart plans his ways, but it is God who directs his path. So recently, in having a conversation with a friend of mine, I said, as I'm getting older, I find that I want to do more rather than less. And then the Lord reminded me, as he so often does when I run away with my thoughts, that it's not um, the more that we do, but it's the how we do it and the what we're doing for him. And a great reminder for us always, of course, is, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, For the man looks at the outward appearance, but our God looks at the heart. So there was something, getting back to this personal experience that I mentioned, there was something that I really, really, and to make a strong emph emphasis on that, I'll add one more really. In other words, I really wanted to do it. It was my heart's desire. It was um, burning within me to want to do this specifically. And so I prayed and I counseled and I meditated and I sought God's word and the door closed. So there was a period, of course, of sadness and, and even grieving. But alongside of both of those emotions, there was much prayer. And it was that prayer that brought me through that difficult challenge. And I learned once again that prayer avails much. And in a way that only our great God can do for us, he began to minister to my heart, just as he does, I'm sure, with each and every one of you. Now, we know that God mainly speaks to us through his word, but he oftentimes will speak to us through our brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, through words of encouragement, through whatever method that he might put on their hearts. But sometimes I think also there's that still, small voice where God speaks to us directly. And I feel, and I believe as a matter of fact, that at that moment, that's how God spoke to me. He knew the tenderness of my heart. He knew my desires and my disappointments. And so I felt in that moment that he said to me, that good that you were faithfully praying over, 
and trying to do. Well, my dear, it's just as if you did it. So it's a, it's a heart matter. All of those kinds of situations are a heart matter. You know, there was such comfort that came from our great God for me in that moment. So I'd like to encourage you with that same com comfort. You know, it's there. It's not just for a select few of people. Comfort of God is there for each and every one of us. He is the God of all comfort. He comforts us, and in turn, through that comforting time, he teaches us how to comfort others. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. So as I close, I'd like to close with these words, you know, that maybe there's something that you truly want to do or that you think you believe with your heart that you should be doing it. But at least for now, for whatever reasons, there may be obstacles, there may be issues in your life. Something is holding you back and you can't do it. So I want to just tell you not to be uh, discouraged because if you've been in prayer, if you've been seeking the Lord, and if your heart is truly right with him, you perhaps might hear him say, my dear, it's just as if you did it. Let's pray. So Father, we thank you that, that at times when it can seem to us to be so discouraging and even hopeless, that you're right there beside us. You're just encouraging us, plugging us, along the way, like that little train that could, letting us know that we can do it and that your power and your might will be there for us always. You'll never forsake us. You'll never leave us. And so in your most precious name, Father, we thank you and we give you all the glory and the honor. Amen. Well, goodbye, my friends, until we meet again.